Today, we're talking about gain. Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about gain, effects pedals, preamps, guitar amplifiers, and how to stack up gain within different components. So there's a lot of nonsense talked on the internet about gain stacking and guitar pedals and compression into the front of amps and all this. Um, and I'm just going to teach you one piece of information which will help you understand how the signal flows and how tone is affected. So let's imagine a guitar setup with a guitar straight into an amplifier. We've got our guitar, we've got pickups, we've got a cable moving into a preamp. The preamp then amplifies the signal according to the gain knob control and then there's a power amp on the output stage and in our case let's imagine that's a fixed output, um, a fixed gain power amp. And that goes off to speakers. We don't need to worry about the power amp and speakers for the moment. Uh, we'll talk about them in another episode. So in our preamp section, we've got a gain control. And the gain control sets the amplification factor of the guitar input signal before it goes onto the power amp. Now imagine if the gain was set higher than the supply voltage to the preamp. So what happens where well, we get clipping? The preamp hasn't got enough headroom to amplify the signal cleanly. Now, depending on what the components are within that preamp, the clipping may or may not be to your liking. But that is basically how all distortion works. Okay, there's some fancy things like bit reduction and phase adjustment and, and uh, wet dry controls. We're just talking about basic distortion in a guitar amplifier, in any kind of distortion pedal. Now just bear in mind, pedals like these may have multiple stages within them and filters or components that create different equalization filtering. So it's not as simple as just, yeah, the wave gets squared off. It really depends on whether you put it into a valve, whether you put it into um, a diode array, which is basically um, diodes have a, have a breakdown voltage in the reverse direction, so they work a little bit differently, but the principle is very much the same. The signal cannot get beyond a certain value. So let's talk about this in terms of overdrive versus distortion. What is overdrives versus distortion? Well, they're not really a different thing. All an overdrive is, is either a lighter version of distortion with a lower gain amplification factor, or it's designed like a boost pedal to push a higher signal into the next stage. So if you had an amplifier like a booster between our guitar and our preamp, the signal into the preamp is already going to be high, so we need less gain at the preamp to distort it. When we talk about distortion pedals, though, we usually imagine that there's some kind of distorting stage within the pedal, or multiple stages within the pedal. And again, it's exactly the same thing. Okay, so we're over at Pro Tools now. I'm using Pro Tools. Any workstation is fine. You can use an oscilloscope if you want, if you want to do it old school. Um, so what I've done is I've pumped uh, a couple of different sine waves through various effects pedals. Uh, and, and an amplifier, I see. Um, and as you can see, each of these is a different effect pedal. Um, there are different amplitudes, so that suggests to me that there are there is some kind of filtering going on. Um, so if we zoom in, we can see what the uh, the tube screamer is doing, and it's basically clipping, but it's got a kind of a soft clipping. Um, it, it doesn't do too much damage in that in terms of um, squaring off the waveform at that point. Um, let's have a little look at the distortion units. It's an orange type distortion paddle, you know the one. Um, there's a little bump at the start and then flat. Yeah. And the metal zone type distortion. Wow. Well, look at that. That's really interesting. We can see uh, what appears to be some kind of crossover distortion. Um, so, you know, this is not not um, just a square wave. So that's quite interesting. 
Um, let's have a look at what happens in terms of the frequencies generated. And I'm just going to run the sine wave into this analyzer and the uh, affected sine wave through the tube screamer into this analyzer. The harmonics that are generated from the distortion um, on the on the right hand um, analyzer will show you the different types of, of content which is created and added into the um, into the waveform. So here we go. Let's look at that once more. So from the top, I'll just play the uh, one kilohertz wave. So did you notice there that there were added harmonics? One other thing that I wanted to show you was a tube screamer into an amplifier uh, with a little bit of crunch on it. How's that for a waveform? Very interesting indeed. There's all sorts going on there. and a distortion into uh, the metal zone. <laughs> it's really crazy waveforms going on. It's a bit like Batman, doesn't it? Just from that initial sine wave. So that's the sort of thing that gain stacking can do. It can add different characteristics to the way things clip. But, um, you know, as I said, you've still got to be aware that you're really just looking at um, either overdriving an input stage or overdriving a stage within a pedal. So, you know, it's not as complicated as it sounds. Filtering is the main thing that's causing all the weirdness. Um, yeah, so go and stack. Stack pedals, stack whatever you want and, and enjoy, have a go.